So how old are you? Uh, uh, I'm 19. Oh, I'm a sophomore. No. I'm both sophomores. Oh, that's so cute. What, <laughs> what are you? I'm 20. You're yeah, absolutely. You guys, boy, he made his boy's day. Was that? <laughs> I'm 20. <laughs> now, nah, your voice, you sound like you just finished puberty. Like, you know, I remember, I, remember, I remember those years, man. These was good years. I used to stay up in Drew Hall, so, like, being at HU, and just, you know, I feel like I'm at home and walking up and down these streets. Yeah, actually, you came back from. Oh, oh no, you, you came it. back from homecoming. You were the grand ambassador. What was that like coming back to Howard? What was that experience like? I mean, it's, it's great, man. I love this school. I had a great time. I was here for two years, a year and a half, I think two years. And then I did more money. And um, you know, it was just time for me to go. And, uh, yeah. You know, that blew up, and I got an opportunity to go do another color and pursue my dreams. And you know, um, I just, it, it was time. I was, I was, uh, Howard taught me a lot, and it taught me more about being, uh, about manhood, about responsibilities. I still have some very close friends that I made here that are out in LA with me, and you know, we still cool. So you make lifelong friends at, at HU, and you know, look, it's the struggle, man. Right. You, this, <laughs> HU is the struggle. <laughs> you learn how to hustle. You learn how to live. Yes. You know what I mean? You learn. You learn how to live on no budget. You learn. You know, college, especially when you go to, you know, like coming from the, the hood and going to college. Right. I, college had me going. I miss the hood. You know. Um, <laughs> You know, because it, it is tough, and but it teaches you your way. You learn how to survive. You learn how to, you know, you get your group of friends, you get your sect of people, and as a community, you 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 come up and grow together, and you help each other study. You, you borrow money here and there. Oh, you got? Uh, let me borrow your pants. You create new outfits. <laughs> you know, you wear them pants. Some dudes boost. You know, oh, you 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 stole those. Oh, cool, man. Let me rock those tonight. Man. Right. I ain't have to go to jail for it. So you know. <laughs> And, and, you know, you, I said heat lunch up in my um in Drew Hall. I used to have a, I had a plug in. I said he had a hot plate. Uh, yes. Like, like jail, man. <laughs> iron sandwiches, your cheese sandwiches on the iron board, you know. <laughs> but you know, I, I, look, I would never take back the experience that I had at HU. HU is a wonderful place, a wonderful school, a great learning environment. Even you know, as uh, what, what's funny about every college is. You always find your haters, but you know what I found was in you know in HU they had their share of haters, you know. Right. But because when I came in, I was a living color's little brother, right. so I caught all the heat. You know, Negro was after me, and I was just like, nah, I'm, you understand? I'm uh, I'm still. I just left the hood like last year. Right. I don't know if y'all want this. <laughs> you know. So, um, but 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 what I learned was that. There's, in life, you're gonna have haters, and you just have to learn to navigate through them, and you use them as fuel, and you go, my brother taught me something. Every time I had a problem, I used to go to go to pay phone, like jail, and phone, <laughs> phone check, nigga. And I used to be like, yo, let me use phone, so I would call my brother, Keenan Collect. Keenan always dropped jewels, and be like, let me, tell, let me tell you something. Success is your best revenge. And I was like, wow, that's a proverb. <laughs> and from there, man, I just was like, you know what? Everybody that pisses me off, everybody go does me wrong. I just put it, I take that negative, I put in a fuel tank, and I let it fuel my positivity, I let it fuel my success. And I don't, I'm not, I don't credit those people, but I don't discredit them. I don't, I, I burn off 110% love. Sometimes I got that 5% where I'm just tired, and I just go, you know what? There's doubters out there, I gotta, I gotta make them eat it, you know? Yeah. Um, what was the biggest change that you saw when you came back to Howard um, this this year? Surprisingly in love? Uh, nothing. No. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, actually, no, 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 no. It, it's come a long way. Y'all y'all, had me jealous. You understand? I went to the yard. I went to homecoming. Y'all had a stage. You had monitors where you could see the artists. I mean, you had... Velvet ropes and I mean, never mind. People crash those, but you know that's gonna happen. <laughs> but it was set up nice. Y'all organizing really well, you know. And I think that you know the the the, the alumni of Howard, you know, they 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 support it and they love the school. And you know, I, I see the the growth. I, I see buildings that are you know improved from when I was here. I went by, by the. Um, the what you call it, the, the theater? Oh, uh, fine arts. Fine the arts. arts. Yeah, <laughs> it's changed up. You know, I looked at this the, the auditorium they had. And I went by when Drew. I went by Drew. Drew is different. They paint it. You know, <laughs> they got new bathrooms. They got curtains on the bathroom. 
curtain so when you shower you get to have privacy. You guys have had that? What? It was an episode of Oz when we was here. <laughs> <laughs> you go in the bathroom to wash your wash, you gotta look up because there's meat, 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 meat everywhere and you like, oh man, oh like and you can always tell the dude with the little ding ding. Cause he would shower at weird times, like <laughs> he would shower like four ten in the morning. <laughs> we, we in the car, but we can't even like we can't we can Ah, you don't know how or to stand at Drew Hall. We used, to, we used to smuggle girls inside Drew Hall like like it was drugs. We used to smuggle them inside in a in a duffel bag. <laughs> we had fun, man. Me and uh, Drew Cows, that was my my boys. We used to because I didn't join a frat because mm -hmm. I came from. You know, I'm a Wayne. I was right. born a, born into a frat and I got hazed my whole time. So my brother Keenan was like, mm -mm, you don't do no frat. <laughs> Them Negroes will try to kill you. <laughs> and because, you know, I was a little girl's brother. And I was like, yeah, but I could take it. It's not about that. It's not about what you can take. It's about what you can give. Go go do that somewhere else. Because he's a, my brother Keenan's an alpha. And um, so I just created my own frat with my boys, the Drew Cows. But um, yeah, it, Drew's improved a lot. I only think I sold one roach. <laughs> <laughs> your, your, your impersonation of Keenan is killing me, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Um, actually, y'all lunch is improved. Like, really? really? Yes, really. Uh, no, Don't you turn no. your mouth. Don't you. <laughs> but I feel like an old slave. What's wrong with you, boy? You got your papers. <laughs> no, sorry ain't good enough, punk. I should put my foot in your behind. Oh yeah? Make me. <laughs> get, get off me. Get off me. Go, go! Go, go! So! Yo, so thug, what's up? You got beat? Yo, man. <laughs> <laughs> get off me. Hey, 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 what you doing? Oh! Get off me. See that tripping up in here? <laughs> you see that tripping up in here? And you back off them, brother. You, you don't know me. I'm crazy. I'm from Detroit. I'll shake the brother up here. <laughs> Like if you're into comedy, I would say do parody, I would say do sketch because it's the more desperate medium and it teaches you the art of joke after joke after joke after joke. Parody, you do not let up. It's it's non-stop. It's like, you know, it's not one joke a page. No, everything on the page is a joke. Where are you? What's funny about it? What's the name of the place that you're at? The Rick James Jail, you mm -hmm. know, okay? Right. Pop culture, you wanna infuse pop culture in it. Okay, now you go, what's the, what, what's the action? How does the place look? Describe the place, that has to be jokes. Then you have to describe what the character's doing. He has to be doing something funny. Then you gotta write the character. What's funny about him? Who is he? Everything funny, his point of view. Now his dialogue, that gotta be funny. And then his dialogue connecting to the other person has to be funny. It's non-stop pitching jokes, and you're pitching jokes for literally 120 pages. So you're hoping to amass somewhere, if you get five to 10 jokes a page, you're looking at that 12 to 1500 joke range that you throw out, of which maybe 30 may stay, or 40 may stay, of which maybe 10 big laughs. Mm. So it, it's a beast, man. It's a grind, and yeah, I would say that any young dude, I think they should teach a parody class here. I think you know, um, I, I I think the like you know for the filmmakers, there's, there's, there's I think if I had to do it, I, I I think they should teach a business course for film mm. for up and coming filmmakers at Howard because once you get out there. You have no idea, and it's gonna take a veteran to come in here and go. This is the process. This is how you do it. You got a script. Here's how you man manicure that script. Here's where you get that script to. Once you get that to this script level and you're ready to shop it, then you wanna. Here's the process of getting an agent. Here's the process of getting a manager. This is what they should get. You like. Here's your what you should get when you get lawyers. Here's what you should look for. Like to teach the business of. Of, of the art because I think and learn the business learn the politics and you learn the science that's gonna help you be more successful you didn't even ask me that question I just dropping jewels no, cause y'all no, from I, HU I, I, cause you HU baby you little bisons <laughs> actually I was gonna ask you about that um but well you're too damn late right, you little right, bison right you beat me to the punch you're <laughs> to life. I'm really proud you brought the flat top back I make me want to grow mine back <laughs> hey man I, I, right I just cut mine off last week oh he, he got the hood high and the haircut right. yeah, no, I, no. I got the hat it's cool no, I, I was gonna. I had 
my, when I was here, my flat top was like sick, man. I was just out of, I, that was when it was first in style. So y'all talk about, oh, the Jordans, you know, I, I had the Jordans when he, they first came out, the 11s. Like the I had the 11s, I had the threes, I had I had the original. I still got them in my closet. That's I crazy. I ain't got them, I, ain't, I don't rock them because I just had, I had like a little fresh because they, <laughs> they got the yellow bottoms. But you know, I, I, I thought about being that guy that sits around and go, I'm gonna hold this haircut. I know the flat top's coming back. <laughs> Fashion changes, stuff changes, you gotta go with the times. You know, fo follow the kids and stop trying to dictate what fashion or anything else is. Y'all be, you know, right. y'all dictate the fashion, we follow. Um, well, you got a project um, coming up as we spoke. Um, we were talking before. Yeah, Haunted House. Yeah, Haunted two. House too. Um, for people who maybe maybe not have seen Haunted House one, could you kind of give them maybe a preview to the Haunted House two? Okay, a Haunted House one was basically it was a um, it was a, a, a horror comedy uh, with parody moments. Uh, so it wasn't an official parody, but what we did was I wanted to show the black point of view of what it was like to deal with the paranormal. We see white people do it all the time. And oftentimes as black people we find ourselves going, no, don't go in there, don't, and screaming at the screen because, but really, black people are the real honest audience perspective. We just have Tourette's and we scream at the screen <laughs> because that's just how we do things. So right. in part two, what I did was I wanted to further amplify that dynamic and so Malcolm in part one was about to get killed by his girlfriend Keisha because she was possessed and crazy so he left her and he starts part two trying to get a new girlfriend so he goes and he gets this white girl she played by Jamie Presley he mm -hmm. feels like yo okay she ain't gonna be all attitude new she, she's there things gonna be all it's gonna be all white here <laughs> but then you know she has these two kids and you know they're moving into a new house and starting a new life but there's something spooky about the house and then the daughter finds this box and the box is possessed and the son got this little imaginary friend uh, who's like a ghost, but it's like the worst imaginary friend there. It's like teaching him how to start fires and all kinds of bad stuff. And then there's this creepy doll that Malcolm encounters that winds up stalking him. And then on top of that, his crazy ex-girlfriend Keisha moves next door. And the reason why I wanted to do the interracial couple uh, was because I wanted to show what it was like how white people deal with it. And I wanted Malcolm with the paranormal and I wanted Malcolm to be able to react to his white girlfriend like, oh my god, a ghost, that's so cool. No, B, it ain't cool, right. <laughs> it's a ghost. You know, I wanted to have that conversation and it, look, we talk about all that in the room, the sister's perspective of, oh no, he didn't. With a white girl, we talk about all that. Right. And it just gave us more, more truth based on, you know, the things that's happening in the world today. There's a lot of uh, interracial couples, uh, uh, you know, and I think that it, it's something, a new complexion to be spoken for, and a new fun, and a, new, a new angle, something we haven't seen. Also, we have uh, Gabriel Iglesias, yes. who is my next door neighbor, who's a huge Latino star and uh, comedic star. He's absolutely hilarious yes. in the movie. And, you know, L Latinos aren't spoken for either. And when I do my movies, I like to show the world. I show, especially, I do urban movies. And so my core is urban, you know what I'm saying? Young, you guys, you know, young, hip, white kids, you know, Latinos. It's everybody that don't look like the white people on the dollar bill is my audience under um, the umbrella of, you know, of, of urban. So I want to represent, do a movie that represents all that. Of course, Cedric, the entertainer, is back. Atheon Crockett is in it. Uh, he kills it. Uh, Sed destroys it. Uh, Gabriel's funny. So. Jamie's Presley's funny, uh, Essence Atkins is in it, and so we hit you with, it's non-stop comedy, literally from the time you sit down to the time you leave the theater, there's times in there where people need to miss five jokes because they're too busy laughing at the one joke before it. Alright, well we just want to thank you so much, Marlon. Oh, you kicking me out now, <laughs> you little bison. <laughs> we just want to thank you so much, uh, Marlon Wayans, for coming here and sitting with us um, here on the Black Lunchbox. We really appreciate it. Of course, and we're looking man. forward I'm proud to seeing you, Haunted House too. I'm, I hope to see you guys. Oh, what, what days I want you to do me a favor. I want you to get your little... He, he, who said they're doing comedy? Me. He's doing comedy. Yeah. I want you to get your little ass on stage. I want you to be on stage every night. I don't care if you got school, work, whatever. If you go three, four times a week, like a gym, I'll be happy for you because you want to prepare for what you're gonna do after this. The comedy stage is gonna teach you a lot about writing, a lot about what's gonna work, what's not gonna work. It's gonna build you as a performer. It's gonna teach you to do characters. It's gonna give you everything that you need to go out there and make it in the comedic industry. But you gotta stay, stay, stay hard doing it and really stay committed. And failure, 
you don't fail until you stop trying. So once you're, you know, for me, success is not a destination. It's just a road that you travel. So if you guys, and this goes for everybody out there that's listening, you know, do hope you're studying at Howard, something that you love to do. You know, we all try to make our parents happy, but you gotta make you happy because you gotta do what you wanna do. So do what you love, learn the business behind your art and the science, and then go learn, uh, uh, figure out the politics, and you will all be successful. I love y'all. Uh, H.U., uh, near and dear to my heart. Peace, love, and success. Where's Marlon Williams? Appreciate it.